acclimate uh, here at Bellator, especially considering the uh, All right, we are now being joined by Janae Harding. We'll begin with a few questions from our media. Gabriel, your line is now live. Hello, Janae. Hey, how are you? Doing well, thank you. Uh, my first question, I asked Leah this and I'd like to ask you this. You're obviously still young in your career and building experience, but when you look at that featherweight title picture in Bellator, it feels like both you and her could be on that fast track to that title fight. How do you manage your own expectations for your career, knowing how the division is kind of playing out lately? I think it's just understanding in the back of your mind that that's always a possibility, um, that the title shot could literally be around the corner when you look at um, the likes of, say, like Olga Rubin or certain people that, you know, like the two title holders that we've had have both sort of run through the division quite quickly. So you sort of expect that they start dipping into outside of the the top five um for that reason i always sort of just concentrate on the fight in front of me first and foremost make sure that's my priority and then of course just understand at the end of the, the day like after this fight you know it may be the call up or it may be one or two fights off or etc cetera, etc cetera. i've been expecting that for like my last three fights i think um i sort of put it in perspective so it's just kind of knowing keeping it in the back of your mind and knowing i think everyone in the top 10 should be kind of preparing for cyborg at some point in a sense so um just keeping that motivation and understanding um, really helps. We spoke last year and you talked about getting to work with Disney for the Mulan stuff and working with the Bose headphones. Those are big deals as you know, a young athlete. Uh, can I ask like, what have you done? It's like, are you dipping your hand in any other businesses and any other crossovers? What's new on that front for your career? Yeah, I guess it's just sort of um, opened up my horizons in a sense, understanding that, um, you know, these are definitely more opportunities that I want to get a part of. Um, I I feel like COVID sort of pushed me into this avenue, um, which is great. So therefore, yeah, I've, I guess ever since I've been doing a lot more casting and self-taping and things that I'm sort of getting used to, I think it would just broaden my resume and, and, and keep adding to it. There's nothing that I can really announce in a sense, but um, just in a general sense, I've just been working towards it more, getting a little bit more experience in that sort of media um, and, and brand ambassador sort of um, avenue. And then, yeah, working from there. So hopefully we do some more in the future. Mike? Hey, Janae, now that fight week is here, you're finally in the States, and the fight's just a couple of days away. Just curious, how are you feeling, and do you have the Krispy Kremes ready for you Saturday morning? I do not. I've been very good at um, self-control, which is something <laughs> that I'm not always good at. I always go overboard on, like, um, getting snacks, before, before one, before I leave Australia, and two, before my fight, and just hoarding them in my hotel room. But um, for whatever reason, this fight, I've just made sure that, yeah, all my snacks and um, everything are prepared post weigh in for like all the healthy stuff pre fight. And um, I know that Krispy Kreme is not going anywhere. And the best version of it is the fresh version. So I'm just going to go straight from the arena. I'm so happy um, in a sense that I'm early again. So I'm going to go straight from the arena and grab them. I'm feeling great. Ronald. This is Ronald E. Smith from Getting Real. Janae, how are you doing? Good. Thank you. How are you? Can't complain. And one thing I would like to know is, you know, since this is the new year and it looks like we're starting to get everything rolling again. How are you from previous of last year been able to keep yourself focused with everything that has been happening? Yeah, it's actually been great. I guess, um, I always sort of knew as much as I guess I expected last year, this, this fight to go back, um, go for, sorry. Um, I always sort of knew in the back of my mind that this would be a matchup that was coming next. So it's like, I sort of had good direction, good motivation and a good understanding that um, sometime this year we would end up fighting. So therefore I just had to keep preparing for it. Um, I had a face and a name, which was a great thing that keeps you motivated. Um, and therefore I just needed to wait for that date. So I just sort of had been prepping. I live in a country that obviously, as you guys, no isn't as the rest of the world so that's been fantastic my my training schedule hasn't been affected and i've been able to stay motivated and just stick with my team and keep building together and how has training been for you during this time to get prepared for this fight yeah fantastic um honestly from like I guess everyday training to camp, it didn't really change that much. It just was like the intensity of the sessions, but the schedule itself stayed the same. So I was very, I guess, used to the schedule. 
um, I'm very lucky that um, all my coaches are very invested in me um, specifically, which has been phenomenal. And they all kind of work together, um, which is just one of those things that, um, I don't know, pays dividends in a sense when you know that, yeah, your strength and conditioning coach is speaking to your head MMA coach, which knows your boxing coach in a sense like that. So um, everything has sort of worked out really well. I've had consistent training partners. The whole team has been motivated because back in Australia, all our fights have pretty much started back up. And because of that, it's been very active for our entire team. So everyone's been in a good headspace, good vibes. So all in all, this camp's been awesome. Darren. Thanks for having me. Janae. Uh, besides asking you how you're doing, the first question is, who or what was it that first got you into MMA? Uh, thank you, and I'm doing very well. Um, I would say it was it wasn't necessarily somebody. Um, it was definitely more what. I started in um, karate. I really loved martial arts. I tried every sport under the sun, um, being an only child and just trying to stay active um, as a kid. And then I guess transitioning from karate and getting a little bit bored of it I found MMA kind of by chance almost before I really understood the sport itself and then slowly and progressively over time um, I really fell in love with it after I finished school I was like you know what this is what I want to do um, and after my first fight and how well it went I was like yep this is everything that I want and um, everything that makes me happy and therefore I've sort of sacrificed a lot to get here but it's all worked out which is great. And I usually hear that the BPM, the beats per minute, is the most important part of the music you're training to. But when you have control of the radio or the stereo at the gym, what do you like to put on to train to? This is like something that I am like I will walk into sparring day and the first thing I will say is give me the orcs like <laughs> let me take over the music kind of vibe um it's more just vibes it's not necessarily one genre as per se I have a lot of playlists sort of on my Spotify and stuff um that I sort of cycle through depending on what I'm feeling but it's all about vibes it's not like heavy um aggressive or whatever like it may be it's just about things that songs that make me feel good songs that I relate good memories to all that sort of stuff Good vibes only. Dylan? Hey there, Janae. Appreciate you making some time. Thank you. I'm just kind of curious if you're, you know, still getting in that work at King's Academy of Martial Arts because you were mentioning some of the people you were sparring with ahead of this one. And I was kind of curious, like, who you were getting in that work with ahead of this one. Yeah, that is my main um, gym, um, in a sense. That's sort of my base, uh, especially due to the facilities and the team that's there. Um, the good thing is that it's like our Kings team moves around together. So we do sort of jump around from that Kings down to um, to a different area, um, but all with the same people. So it's sort of like um, our base, definitely. I spend at least like four days a week there. And then the rest of the day is just moving around like strength and conditioning, boxing and um, a different MMA gym, which is great. Um, but yeah, it's been fantastic. Elvis Sinisic, as you know, the owner of King's Academy, the facilities and everything he provides us there is phenomenal. And that's my main sparring gym as well. So it's been great. One or two more here, Mark. Yeah, um, I was wondering, you were active very active back in 2019 before the pandemic between boxing and mixed martial arts. And obviously with the pandemic, everything kind of shut down. I was wondering, first of all, has that helped you in a way that, you know, kind of get some injury, lagging injuries kind of healed up and, you know, kind of concentrate a little bit more on training? And are you looking to amp up after after this fight, do more boxing, do it more or more mixed martial arts fights? Yeah, like you're saying, I was really lucky to be super active. Literally, I was in the Philippines when COVID first started um, for a two week training camp to help the Olympic team over there. So like from the get go, like till the very end, um, I was really active. And then I guess everything halted. It gave me a little bit of time to rest and take a take a little bit of time away from the gym because they were closed for a little bit there, um, which really helped, I think, not only my injuries, but my relationship with food, I guess, less cutting weight, all these sort of things that obviously factor into your health and well-being it gave me a little bit more quality of life and it kind of ramped me up ready to get back into it as soon as everything started again um in the way of boxing it's definitely something that i put aside for now um after that last boxing fight i decided that um it was just altering my mma style a little bit too much i love boxing i love the whole vibe of it and just going really into refining the hands and everything like that and I've come to understand it a lot better than I used to but at the same time it does take away from your MMA training and knowing like we're saying um, that the title shot is around the corner I really want to put all my focus into MMA because that is my main priority and always will be so therefore um, boxing is is going to take a back seat and um, hopefully I can just stay as active as possible in MMA. Last one Michael. 
Hey, Jenny, hope you're doing well. Uh, my first question is, uh, what are, I mean, we've heard the, the good sides of the pandemic and how does that affect your career, but what are the principal struggles you've faced, you know, training and preparing for this fight in the middle of a pandemic with everyone wearing uh, like a mask, gyms got closed, like what are the principal struggles you face? Yeah, it definitely initially in Australia, we had those those setbacks and closed gyms and stuff. It changed my schedule. Couldn't be as active as I wanted to be and what I was used to training two, three times a day that really got stripped back. Um, but I guess we were really lucky that we never really had to do the mask thing that much in Australia. So the biggest um, issue for me has been that international travel, just the unknown um, factor of it constantly like canceling flights and stuff for that last fight we had like a few different routes because they were just constantly getting canceled because obviously they weren't filling up so it's just um obviously being in australia and fighting for a promotion like bellator that's solely generally based in the u.s and now obviously based here because of covid um that was a really hard thing for me um and not sort of knowing how the quarantine and stuff was going to work all these things those have been the biggest setbacks but all in all i've been very very blessed to live in australia and, and kind of not be affected by the other restrictions and my last question how you've been managing the fact that your family is many miles away from you and australia you're in the u.s uh does that affect your concentration for your fight on friday um not at all like I love my family and obviously I miss them. I already live away from my family and I have done for a very long time. So I lived in Thailand, I lived in the UK and this is my sixth fight for Bellator without having my family kind of come over with me. So I'm somewhat used to it. Obviously I would love to have them here and that would just be an added motivator, but it's more of a motivator knowing that I am doing this for them and I am here for that reason. I get to do what I love, chase my dreams and I'll be going back as soon as possible to hang out with them and celebrate. And um, hopefully in the future, we can all come over together all right thanks for the time Janae good luck on Thank Friday you.